I'd like to take you back to Vietnam one night. If I share with you this one night, it's sort of like that describes the whole year. That night, the red alert siren went off. I hear the siren, grab the helmet, grab the flak jacket, run to my unit, and all hell broke loose. We were being rocketed and mortared. I could hear the thuds all around me. Standard operating procedure was protect the patients at all costs. We're throwing mattresses on the patients who couldn't get out of their beds because they were hooked to trachs, ventilators, chest tubes. We didn't go for cover until those men were taken care of. We're getting hit, we're getting hit hard, and the hooch right next to mine had been blown off the face of the map. It was gone. That was one night in Vietnam. These were women who had put themselves in peril. We were in a war zone. We were there to bring the men home alive. That was our mission. Good evening. Just six days ago, the people of America were jolted by an announcement. They considered Vietnam the first television war. It brought them more home to the living rooms. People were now seeing men flying helicopters, flying airplanes, men on the ground, and they were in the jungle, or they were in rice paddies, or they were in body bags. I know there are casualties. So was I thinking about maybe I wouldn't come home? I was only 21, but I know I wasn't bulletproof. The average lifespan of an infantryman in Vietnam only lasted uh, about three months before they were either killed or wounded. When somebody gets wounded, there's usually a lot of hollering and screaming. And guys are yelling for the medic. You go far north of being scared. And you see this buddy of yours in this condition. And when we put him on the helicopter, they would be without legs or arms and, I mean, just horrible, horrible injuries. And these doctors and nurses back in the field hospital, they did miracles on these guys. You know, they came into our unit with every kind of wound. Was it a grenade? Was it a, was it a bullet? Was it a sniper? Patients who hadn't just been wounded but now also have malaria. Was I prepared for what I saw in Vietnam? No. Of course not. Nothing prepares you for that. Was I prepared for hard work? Yes. Were we prepared to be with a dying soldier and we were that last person he would see? Yes. You know, in my case, when, when I was wounded, I was paralyzed from the waist down. I mean, I thought this was the most horrible thing that could ever happen, right? There was a nurse that had her hand on my forehead and on my neck. And she just held me, you know, she just held me and, and it made me feel. Like it was my mom. I hope that each patient I took care of knew that I was there to give comfort and hope. But the turnover it was endless. Patients kept coming in, and the wounds were so horrendous that we got, and the guys were so young. We only got bad news. If they had a victory someplace, we still got the guys that were wounded. So for us, it wasn't a victory. Nobody ever talked about it, about what we saw that day, about how we felt about it. We just did it. I think when I came home from Vietnam, the one thing I felt the most was this extreme sadness. How could we explain to people what we had just done, what we had just seen? 
people really didn't want to know anyway because they were so anti-war and they held the war against us. So what happened? We clammed up. We stopped talking and we kept it to ourselves. When they came home, they got treated just like we did. To come home and the rest of the people say, whatever you experienced was worth nothing. We don't want to hear about it. That was really, really hard. And so a lot of them had a lot of problems. In 1982, when I learned that there would be a dedication, it was a turning point. Finally, all the people who were opposing the war, they could see us for who we were at the wall, crying over the loss of our friends and the death. And they started hearing the stories of the women and the men who had served. They saw us as people who had served our country and sacrificed and lost lives. You see how many were lost. That's so important for people to see that war is not a movie where everybody gets up at the end. War is devastating. And even if you come back, it's devastating. And it continues to be. I heard about the statute of three men in 84. I had this burning inside of me and something percolating just kept gnawing at me that if there's a statue to three men, we need a statue to honor women. That was the start of the Vietnam Women's Memorial. I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know how to do it, but I'm gonna make some phone calls. Started calling women, trying to find them and then finding them. I was so disheartened by the conversations. Number one. Diane, I don't know how you can talk about it. I hadn't even started thinking about it or talking about it. Because then it would have killed me otherwise. And I know that women have committed suicide because it was just so sad. I thought, why am I gonna do this if the women don't want it? And then you know what occurred to me? I heard bitterness. I heard anger, resignation, sadness. I just heard everything coming out of these women's mouths that told me, these women need a memorial. They need to heal. And people need to know who these women are and need to hear their stories. It took Diane 10 years. The women absolutely needed it. And women have always absolutely needed it. But they never thought they deserved it. Glenna Goodacre, she built us the most beautiful monument we could have hoped for. She captured what it was the women of the Vietnam War needed to help them heal, and really what the world needed to see, and that was how women looked in wartime. It shows the anguish that we had, the hopelessness that we felt, but also that we just kept going and caring for people. This statue said it all for us. And some of them will say, the Vietnam Women's Memorial saved my life. They will say that. For the first time since I served, I felt proud that I was an Army nurse. They talk about how seeing the Vietnam Women's Memorial it connected them to one of the most important parts of their life. And it really has been a healing factor, not just for the veterans, I think, but for the country as a whole. And it has helped them heal. I'm just glad I didn't give up because it was so worth it. It means so much to them. And that was the goal, so.